So today we're going to study this next bit called factoring these basic equations. And these basic equations are of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so here is what we are doing. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at certain factors. Okay, so we need to figure out a few concepts. So what we need to do is we need to find a bunch of numbers that will multiply to a certain number and add to certain number. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. We have, we're multiplying to 10 and adding to seven. So let's go over the basic factors. So for two numbers that multiply to 10, we have two possibilities. We have one and 10 and two and five, right? So that's where we get this nice little table here, right? But then we have to add those two numbers. So one plus 10 is 11 and then two and five gives us seven. So if we're looking at this overall problem, here's what we have found. This information right here that I'm highlighting is what we're looking for. So you would say the integers uh, two and five have, uh, let's call it a product of 10 and sum of seven and that's it we're done so the key idea is we go and search for those basic numbers that work now what would happen if we had something that multiplies to negative 18 but then adds to seven now the key here is that we could have a bunch of numbers that add to 18. you could have six and three um, you could also have 2 and 9 that multiplies to 18, and then 1 and 18, right? But the key is one of them has to be negative, and here is the key. For these numbers to add up to a positive number, the bigger number, the smaller number, is always negative right now for this one it only works if our addition number is positive but if our addition number is negative it's the bigger number that ends up being negative so let's go through all the possibilities so now remember what i told you because our sum is positive our smaller numbers are always going to be negative, right? So I want those to be negative. So here's the key. We go through all our numbers and you find out all of these numbers here multiply to negative 18. But here's the thing. The only one that works here in our list of possibilities is negative two and nine. And those add up to positive seven. So what we can say for our final solution is that the integers negative two and nine have a product of negative 18 and a sum of seven. So now we're going to factor a bunch of trinomials. Okay, so let's do some basic ones. Let's say we have this equation. So we're going to factor these. So imagine I have x squared plus 3x plus 2. All right. So now I have x squared plus 3x plus 2. So if you look at it, I need two numbers that multiply to the last number. In this case, it is 12. No, 2 but then it must add to, or otherwise known as sum to three. So those, 
So two numbers that multiply to 2 but add to 3. So 1 times 2 equals 2, but 1 plus 2 equals 3. Woo! We've got our list of numbers. So now that we have our list of numbers, we can say what our factorization is. So our factoring basically means we have two brackets for our solution. And we write x plus 1 and x plus 2. Now, let's quickly check that. Let's see if this worked. If it works, then we essentially undid the expansion. So we got x plus 1 times x plus 2. If we expand, we're going to get x squared plus 2x. So that's from this to this, right? And then we're going to take this and this and multiply. So we got plus 1x plus 2 times 1, which is 2, which is x squared. Always add the middle parts plus 3x, plus 2. Ho! Oh, it worked. All right, let's try another problem. Let's say we have b, x squared plus, uh, let's go 3x. No, not 3x. Let's go 5x plus 6. Two numbers. So what we need are two numbers that multiply to the last number. Okay, so we're going to multiply to our last number, which is 6, but then add to the middle number. And the middle number in this case is 5. So two numbers that, okay, so right off the bat, two numbers. Okay, so that's going to be, our answer is going to be 3 times 2 is equal to 6, but then 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Ooh, we got what we want. So now our solution is x in brackets. We make our two brackets and we write x plus 2 and x plus 3. We don't have to check this, okay? So now let's do the next problem. So let's say we have another problem that looks like this. Okay, so we have... Let's go, this is question C. So let's say we need to factor the following. So we got x squared minus 10x plus 16, okay? So we have to make a little box here to our right, and we're looking for a number that one times is to something and adds to something else. The stuff that we're timesing to is always the last number. So we're timesing to 16, but then we need to add to negative 10. So we need two numbers that multiply to 16. Multiply to 16. Uh, let's go two numbers that multiply to 16, but add to negative 10. So I could use... 8 and 2. So 8 times 2 is equal to 16. That works, but does 8 plus 2 give me 10? Yes, it does, but it's not quite right. You notice that the middle number here is negative, and because it's negative, that tells us that we have to take, so this doesn't quite work, so what we have to do is we're going to try and use the following. 8 negative 8 times negative 2, well, that does give me 16, but then negative 8 plus negative 2 gives me negative 10, which is what we want. So we happy. So all we have to do is use our brackets. So we write our two brackets for our solution, and then we write, well, x minus two as our answer and x minus eight and we are done all right one last check one last question for the day let's try this one so let's say we have the following d we have nine we have x squared 
plus 9x, and then minus 22. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 22. So that's always the last number we're getting that from. So we're always kind of identifying the last number, right? And then we need to add to the middle number. Okay, so let's add to our middle number, which is positive 9, which is 9. So let's do that. So I need two numbers that multiply to 9. Sorry, multiply to negative 9. No, multiply to negative 22 and add to negative 9. So the hint is... One of these numbers is negative, and the middle, the smaller number is negative. So I'm going to try 2 and 11, but the negative 2 is going to be negative. So we're going to have minus 2 times 11 gives us 22, negative 22, which is what we want. But then we have negative 2 plus 11 gives us 9. Excellent. So there is our answer. X minus 2, X plus 9. Nope, not 9. Plus 11 is our answer. Okay, so those two numbers are negative 2 and 11, and we're done. So in summary, when factoring something like this, X squared plus 5X plus three. We're always looking for the timesing of the last number. Two numbers that times to the last number, but then add to the middle number. Now, sometimes those numbers can be negative and positive, but that's what we get. So in this case, the last number is, the last number is three. And no, not three. The last number, we're going to change that from three to, say, six. So the last number is not three anymore. It is six. And our middle number is five. So two numbers that multiply to 5 are 3 and 2. So that's what we check. We say, okay, 3 times 2 is 5. No, nope, 3 times 2 is actually 6. But then 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Boom, we can use that. So now we go and factor x plus 2 times x plus 3. So the key idea is we're always looking to find the two numbers that multiply to That multiply to the last number, but then add to the middle number. Now remember, the middle number can be positive or negative, and the last number can be positive or negative, so be very careful with that. So I want you to do these questions in order. The homework is on page 309. And you're going to do number 1, 2AC. Number 5. You just need to simply factor. You are going to do number seven, and then you're going to do question number three AB, and then question number nine, and number 10. Right. Good luck.